Hey, what's going on everyone? This is our reviews back with another video and today I will show you guys 10 amazing things that you can do on your iPhone and you probably didn't even know about. Now, another amazing thing you can do right now is subscribe to the channel as most of you guys that watch my videos are currently not subscribed. So I would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. And we're starting things off with assistive touch, a feature I'm pretty sure most of you guys know about and have even used it on your device. But did you know that you can actually do some pretty cool things with assistive touch? Like you can see right here, I can tap on assistive touch to open any app I want, double tap to open another app. That's really cool and you can do that pretty easily. So you go to settings, accessibility, touch, assistive touch, make sure you have it enabled and then you will have custom actions. So you will have three options, single tap, double tap, or long press and I can choose here to open any app I want on my device and I can it can even open these apps directly from the lock screen. So the way to do it, go to shortcuts and tap the plus button and just go ahead and tap right here on the open app and choose any app you want to open. Of course, you can name the shortcut right here. Once you have done that, it's very easy. You go to one of the actions, scroll all the way down and right here you will find the shortcuts. You can choose the one you want and of course then use that action to open that shortcut which in this case will open any app that you like. Moving on to iMessage. There is a pretty cool feature called Digital Touch. I'm pretty sure you might have heard about this feature but have you ever used it and do you know the actions, actually the gestures that you can use with this feature? I can single tap right there to send that circle to anyone I want. I can tap and hold and I can send this fire which I can also move around, just release it and it will send it to someone, you can preview it here. So you can see what you did right there or I can send someone a kiss by simply tapping with two fingers like that. You can send a kiss to anyone you want. That's pretty easy to do and also what you can do is tap and hold with two fingers and you can send a heart to someone. You can see just like that. So you can tap and hold while you're holding it. The heart will beat like that and you can send it just like that. So you can see it's beating, it will be sent like that. But what you can also do is tap and hold here and while the heart is beating, just swipe down and you can see the heart will actually split in half. So that's really, really cool. This is pretty cool things that you can do with digital touch on iMessage. Now here's another really cool iMessage feature. So right here on this list, you will find third party apps like TikTok, for example. If you use TikTok on your device, and you have an account, you can go ahead and see your liked posts right here, your profile and the videos from the people that you're following. Well, you can use these to send them to someone, just tap on it and you can send a TikTok video directly from here without having to leave the iMessage app. Or what gets even better, YouTube. You tap here and you will have your YouTube videos right here. So you have your recently watched videos, you can send that to someone as easy as that. Or even tap here and search the entire YouTube for any video you want and send it to anyone you want directly from here. So I can search for iReviews. And basically once I get the result, I have a video here I want to send just tap on it and go ahead and send it directly from the iMessage app. I've said this before many times again, I will say it once more. Automations on iOS is one of the most underrated features. You can actually do a lot and will save you from a lot of work. So let me show you guys a couple of automations that I believe every iPhone user must have on their device and that are super useful. So you know when your iPhone's battery goes below 20% you will get a pop up asking you whether you want to turn on low power mode or not. Well if you just want to avoid that annoying pop up you can do that automatically. Tap on create personal automation and just find here battery level and then just go here with equals slide here and you can choose 20% or maybe 25 or whatever percentage you want and then tap on next. Tap on add action and make sure you search for set low power mode. Once you find set low power mode, make sure it's at on, tap the next button, disable this, tap on don't ask, make sure you have this disabled as well so you don't get any notifications at all, it just runs in the background and you're good to go. Now another thing with battery, if you use low power mode and you're plugging your device to charge, iOS will automatically turn off low power mode at 80%. In my opinion, that's a bit too much. Well, you can change that. 
tablet plus button create personal automation again find battery level and you can choose rises above so let's do, just go with 50 percent tap the next button add action set low power mode so here we have set low power mode now tap there to turn it off again next disable these and you're good to go once the ba battery percentage rises above 50 percent low power mode is turned off automatically I've seen a lot of iPhone users using Snapchat or Instagram to take videos. Those videos are really not that good in quality. Most people do that because they have this feature that allows you to use one finger to zoom in and out on a video. Well, you can do that on iOS as well. Here from the video section, I can tap to record and I can swipe in and out here to zoom in and out. And even if the iPhone is recording, I can still zoom in and out from here. So I don't have to actually even hold the button in order to zoom in and out. I can zoom in and out from here anytime I want, just like that. Or even if you're on the photo mode, you don't actually have to switch to the video mode at all. You tap and hold, here it's recording a video. You can swipe up and down to zoom in and out, just like you would do with Instagram or Snapchat. Moving on to the Photos app. There are a lot of features that are on the Photos app that I'm pretty sure most people don't really know about and don't ever use them on their device, even though they're super useful. And one of them on the Photos app is filters. You can sort photos and do stuff like that. So you can ac actually only sort photos on albums, on the recent photos, you cannot do that. So you have the three buttons right there. And here we have some really cool options. First of all, we have aspect, you can change that. So whether you want to choose to see the real like format of the photo, or you just want to see all of them the same, like just squares, you can do that from there. The other option right here, is sorting photos. So you can have a custom order so you can move them around and just sort them any way you like, or you can choose oldest to newest or newest to oldest, as easy as that. And of course you can filter those. So I'll tap right there, it will show you the filters here and filters have favorites edited photos and videos so if i want to see if i have any videos on this album just tap right there there are no videos at all i can choose to see only the photos that i have edited tap right there and these are the photos that are actually edited as easy as that you can choose whatever you want to see on the photos app and of course that will help you easier filter your photos and find the exact ones that you need and now i will show you guys something pretty cool how to have a ton of apps on one page on your iPhone. Well, that's easily done with an app called Top Widgets. Let me show you guys how this works. It is actually really, really amazing. Now, the way this will work, you open the app. This is a free app you can install from the App Store. I will leave it linked right down below in the description of the video. Once you have the app opened, just scroll down here till you find this section, go to Quick Launcher, and just find this one right here. It says Shortcut 3.0. Now, this widget allows us to open any of these apps directly from the home screen. Now, these actually work. It's not just like a widget that will display something. It actually works and opens the app. Now, what you can do here is choose the number of rows. And you can go up to eight. You can see how many apps you will have right there on your home screen. So you have eight by eight there, you have a ton of apps. Now you can also change the apps that are on the list. So if you just tap on one of the icons, here we have Discord, I can go ahead and tap right there and choose to have another app. Let's say I wanna have contacts right there, you can see it changed the app and I can even upload there an icon for that app. Once you're done with that, tap on save and now head on to the home screen and just add that widget. So you go to the top widget here, make sure you add the big one. So just go ahead, add it to your home screen. What you need to do now, tap and hold, edit widget, tap on choose and choose the shortcut you just saved. Actually the widget you just saved and you're good to go. You have it right here on the home screen. You can see it actually works. So if I tap right there on the Twitter icon, it actually opens Twitter. That's how cool it is. But you can see when I open Twitter, it will actually redirect me through the top widgets app. Well, you can kind of change that, make that better because it won't work any other way. But what you can do is go to your settings, go to accessibility right here, then go to per app settings, make sure you go to home screen and choose reduce motion and make sure you have turned it on. And then from here, once you do that, 
you can see that transition will be much much smoother and you won't even notice it so that's really cool now this widget like this is good but it doesn't really look that good what you can do to fix that tap and hold here go to the last page without no icons take a screenshot and then go back to the top widget app and just go back here at the top and you will find something here called transparent tab there will show you this screen make sure you just tap here and load the screenshot you just took from the photo library of your device and go back to the home screen go to the widget 3d touch on it tap on edit widget and just go to transparent here tap on choose and choose the position of the widget and just like that you will have this transparent widget with a bunch of icons which you can actually use and open apps directly from the home screen iOS has a feature that allows to save your passwords. Well, if you want to quickly see your passwords, you can do that with Siri. All you have to do is ask her, show my passwords. And just like that, it will display all the passwords that you have saved. Of course, you will have to first authenticate with Face ID in order to be able to see your passwords. On the music app of iOS, when you're playing a song, maybe you're playing an album or a playlist, you have a song playing and you see there a song that you want to play next. The easiest way to add it to up next, just swipe from the left to the right, tap the purple button and you're good to go. You have now that song playing next after the current song. Last but not least, we're talking about a pretty useful iOS feature called Upload Apps. So basically it will remove apps that you haven't used for a long time from your device and then of course anytime you need to in reinstall them on your device you can install them and still have their data there well how do you know which apps have been uploaded and how to quickly reinstall any one of them head on to the app library tap right there and you will see an icon right here at the apps that have been uploaded like if I search for this app right here, Wally, you can see it has been uploaded, but it has that little icon right there, which indicates that it has been uploaded. What I can do from here is just tap that little icon and it will reinstall it quickly on my device. So that is it for this video, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. I'll see you guys on the next one.